Hi, my name is Stephanie Farron and I'm the Tech Facilitator at Butler High School. This video is about an uh, introduction to SchoolNet and how it can be used within the Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. By no means am I expert in SchoolNet. Um, this is just providing an introduction for you. I'm also going to show you where there's other materials uh, if you have further questions about SchoolNet. So SchoolNet is a product that is located within your PowerSchool and it will allow you to search lesson plans and give assessments to students. So if we'll look at, I'm going to start with where there's more resources. If you go to your CMS intranet, and if you don't know what that web address is, it's my.cms.k12.nc.us. Under the Quick Links tab, at the very bottom, there is a link for SchoolNet resources. On this page are the contacts for SchoolNet. Uh, and then also a database of documentation and training documents. So after I finish this presentation, feel free to look back through this. It tells you how to take a test, set up a test, uh, look at reports, individual analysis, a lot of other things. In addition to this, uh, CMS has been offering SchoolNet training at Oak Course Elementary. Um, it's half-day training. It's located inside of My Talent if you want to uh, look for that, um, but they've been having several uh, training dates for those if at the conclusion of this video you'd like to find out for more information. So to get into your SchoolNet account, you're simply going to go to your PowerSchool account. And if you don't know what that web address is, it's cms.powerschool.com slash teachers. cms.powerschool.com slash teachers. Now my account's going to look slightly different because I have an admin account, but every uh, PowerSchool account has um, SchoolNet inside of it, including t uh, students. Once you're inside your PowerSchool account, if you look down the left-hand side of your menu, the very bottom, there's going to be an icon, which may look slightly different from mine, for SchoolNet. And that's actually the same location in every account, the student account, the teacher account, and the admin account. So we're going to click in SchoolNet, and it'll open a new tab. And this is your SchoolNet main page. There are a couple things we need to do the first time just to set up our SchoolNet account, and then you don't really need to worry about these again. One of them is verifying your student rosters. So at the top right-hand side of your screen under My Account, there's a section for Sections and Rosters. <clears throat> if you'll click that, and mine's not going to have, obviously, any students assigned to me, but you'll have a list of all your class schedules and sections for the whole year. You need to click each one, verify that all your students are still in your class, and at the very bottom of the screen, there's a little box with a check mark that says Verify Your Student Rosters. You just have to do this once, and this is important if you're going to give the students an assessment. Okay, I'm going to go back home, so this is my home button to get back to the main page for SchoolNet. So when we're looking at SchoolNet, there's a couple things you just want to look at. There's a Scan It button. Um, there are two or three or more main ways if you want to do an assessment. You can create an assessment and simply print it out and give it to the students by hand. You can create an assessment and print out print it out, and print out bubble sheets. Um, if you do this, you can scan them in your Toshiba copiers, and you'll use the Scanit application. Uh, and then the copiers will grade that work when it's applied into SchoolNet, and then it, will, it can go directly into PowerSchool. Or what we've been doing here at Butler, skipping all those steps, my teachers have created a, a test, and we give the kids a code, they log into their SchoolNet, they take the test, and it automatically populates into their PowerSchool accounts. And I'll show you probably in the next video how to do that. Um, there's a bunch of other things in here as well at the bottom, just so you know. Uh, there's a link to NCDPI, NC Learn, um, M Class, NC Wise Owl, ThinkGate, and your EVOS scores. Um, your principals and your school can see any assessments and any work that your students do in uh, SchoolNet. And that is why a lot of principals like this, because they can see data. How are the students doing on this standard versus another standard versus a uh, grade level? Uh, they cannot see it across the district, though, and the things that you create within SchoolNet stay within your school, unless they're district-wide assessments, and I'll show you what those look like. So your principals could see the data under school and district data. 
<clears throat> and then there's a bunch of reports there too. I'm going to take just a minute and show you about the classrooms. So classrooms, you can look at your student performance and as you start giving students assessments, you'll see by student um, a breakdown of their strengths and their weaknesses by your standards. Uh, there is also a lesson planner. I'm going to click on that real quick so you can just see it. Um, most of my teachers prefer not to use this because it's just an electronic lesson planner versus uh, a, a paper and pencil one that most people do use. But you can come in here and when you're assigning work or uploading work, then you can come back year after year and look back at your lesson planner and what you did week from week and your materials. The last thing though that I do think is very helpful for teachers is the instruction materials folder. So I'm going to click this. Basically, this is a database of lesson plans. Um, so you can search by subject. And so for today, I'm going to just grab social studies. Um, you can search by grade. And a lot of times um, with my teachers, uh, I recommend that you actually do secondary, all secondary, because a lot of times we have to do remedial work with some of our students for topics they may not have learned uh, before they got to us. Or there are subjects that are overlap that are taught in sixth grade, but then are taught again in 10th grade. So it might be something that is labeled as a sixth grade resource but could actually work well with my tenth grade resource as well. It is up to you. You also can sort by the type of material. I'm just going to leave it at that and search so you can see what these look like. Basically what happens is on the left hand side there's a menu of the way you can sort through this. I came up with 1600 uh, SchoolNet resources um, and then there's a thousand more. So there's about 2000 in here for social studies just for 6 through 12. Um, you can open and look at any of them. It will let you preview it. All the materials should be in here. What I like on the left hand side though is you can sort by material type and it will show you in the little parentheses how many types uh, you have by the source. The intended audience, the publisher. So a couple years ago SchoolNet had contacted me and asked me to place lesson plans up here. I actually didn't, but the lesson plans that are up here could be from a teacher, they could be from a company, uh, like a textbook company, or another resource, like for example I'm looking at one right here from Emory University, one from the European Union. Um, so it's a really good place when you're struggling to come up with a new way to teach the same topic or to uh, remediate a topic, or if you're a new teacher just coming up with a strategy or a different way to use things. Um, so there's a lot of resources in here that you can search through and all you have to do is click on it. Uh, so here's eight tribes, one slate Native Americans in North Carolina. This is probably more geared to eighth grade, but you can come through and it'll tell you what the contents are, how it's aligned to the standards. You can open up the documentation you need to take to teach the, the, the subject matter. So this is a really good tool. And now I'm going to move to the other big powerful thing that SchoolNet has for you, and that is the assessments. Um, in this video, I'm probably just going to get you started looking at the assessments, and in the next video, I'll tell you about how to assign them and give them to your classes. So the last uh, toolbar menu at the top is your assessments. You have a dashboard where you can see where your most relevant tests are and how your students are doing once you start giving assessments. You can create, so this middle passage here, you can schedule and assign the tests and you can check your, track your completion rates. So here at Butler, I have a lot of teachers that are doing this and they're using it for review before exams and they're giving the students lots and lots of mini assessments uh, to see by standards which standards they're doing well on, how to, which ones they need to review on. Um, and that seems to be working very well. I like to start this by looking for an item, passage, or rubric. Uh, because then I can search the database to see what kinds of things are already there. Now, this is the most time-consuming part as a teacher um, because there's a lot of things in the database depending on your subject. Some subjects have nothing in the database yet. So <clears throat> here's the database. You can browse it by subject, by grade, by standards, and so on and so forth in this gray bar. So I'm going to do it by subject first, and again, um, if you didn't know, I used to teach social studies, so I'm going to pick social studies. The nice thing I like about it is it does tell you again in parentheses how many items are already in the test bank. So we'll look here, um, and then I can also uh, sort it by grade or by standards. So um, this time maybe I'll just do it for ninth and 10th grade, just to see, oh, there's nothing in 10th grade. So we'll just leave it at ninth and then click view results. 
So there's 2,317 uh, sort, uh, searches in here right now. I can actually go through all these, and, and yes, like I said, it is time consuming. If I like it, it tells me over here on the right hand side what the subject is, what the grade level is, what language the, the question was written in, and what standard is there. Um, if I like the, the question and I want to add it to a test, I'd simply check mark it and click add items to a test, and I then would need to create a test name. There is a standard for test names in CMS in the database, and I believe it is um, your subject matter, your name, and the year. Uh, I'll look in the test bank again and see um, when we get there, but just so you know. So it is time consuming to scroll through all this. One of the things that we have suggested, and it hasn't been done yet, is divide and conquer. Maybe if the social studies department wants to come up with a test for everyone, you uh, break up, why don't you look at only standard one, standard two, standard three, and let's combine the questions that we want to put on a combined test together. So it is going to take a, time, a, a few minutes to look through the test bank. And I'm going to stop this video right here and then start another one in just a moment uh, to give you time to uh, show you how to assign a test and then administer it.